Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers reasonable suspicion, police investigations, and officer experience, and is brought to us by the Marin Independent Journal's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that features a catalog of thousands of inspiring classes designed for creative and curious people. With so much to explore, endless projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers its members to accomplish real growth through the development of valuable skills. Even the simplest Skillshare classes offer a ton of value, and I particularly enjoyed Ilana Karp's class on how to make the perfect grilled cheese. A Skillshare membership is already super affordable, but right now, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. You have absolutely nothing to lose, so click on the link in the description and empower your personal growth today. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. In the early morning hours of August 21st, 2020, Yema Khalif, the owner of fashion startup Yema, and his wife and co-owner Hawi Awash were working late at their store in downtown Tiburon, California along with a friend visiting from Washington, D.C. According to Mr. Khalif, a Tiburon police car drove around the block three times, at one point stopping across from the store for about a minute. After conducting this surveillance, the officer parked and began to approach the store. Hey guys. You guys, I've never seen you open this late. Yeah. Are you just restocking? No, we're just doing our thing. What's just up? doing your thing? What's yeah. your thing? What's up? Well, I just, I've never seen anyone in the store this Is late. Is problem? Okay, bring me. No, 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 just chill, just oh, chill. Is that a problem? No, sir, there's no problem. I'm just, I've never seen anyone in the store this late. I wanted to come check in, make sure there's everything's no okay. There's no problem going on. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys restocking the store? There's, or? there's no problem going on. Why are you here so late? It does not matter. It does matter. To who? To me. Why? Because the store's never open this is, late. Is it your store? No. And then what? No, If it's not your store, what's the problem? I'm making sure that everyone is okay there's down no here. There's no problem going on. So if you have a problem, you let me know right now if there's a problem. I just want to know why you guys are here so late. It does not matter. It does matter to me. It does not matter to me. It so does. if you have a problem, you tell me right now if you have a problem. I don't have a problem, sir. Mm -hmm. I just want to know why you guys are here so late. It does not matter. That's it, what I'm telling it you. It does to me. Can you take a hand in your pocket, please? It does not Thank matter you. to me. Okay. Why are you guys here so late? It does not matter to me. I don't care, sir. If you have a problem, call your, call your chief of police. Call whoever you want to call. My supervisor is already on his way. Yeah, call him. Tell him to come talk He's to me. coming. Or when do you own the store? Huh? Do you want to own the store? It does not matter. I'm not going to answer your question. If you have a problem, you tell me you have a problem. I have a problem with you guys being here so late and you not tell me why. Is it your store? No. So you call your supervisor, tell him to come here. He's already on his way. Okay, so when he's here, knock the door, tell me he's here. Is that okay? Okay. Can you just tell me why you guys are here? It does not matter. Go? Call your supervisor, tell him to come here. And then, um, do one of you two own the store? No, or have any it, reason do not talk here? to anybody else. Talk to me. You're talking to me right now. No, I'm talking to all three you're of you. Not, all you're three talking to me, store. sir. Okay, you're talking to me. Call your supervisor, let him come here. He's already on his way. Okay, so when he's here, let you let me know. No, why don't you come out here for me? The officer orders Mr. Khalif to step out of the store, which would constitute a detainment by show of authority. As we've discussed many times on ATA, in order to detain an individual, police officers must have a reasonable suspicion that the individual is involved in criminal activity. In the 1974 case of People v. Lathan, the second Appalachian district of the California Court of Appeals determined that a police officer did not have reasonable suspicion to detain an individual who was behaving in an unusual, but not overtly criminal way. The court stated that not only must an officer have a a rational suspicion that some activity out of the ordinary is or has taken place, but the officer must also have some suggestion that the activity is related to crime. Where the events an officer observes are as consistent with innocent activity as with criminal activity, a detention based on those events is unlawful. The court also stated that the fact an event occurs at nighttime does not, without more, transform an innocent gesture into a criminal one. Finally, the court concluded that it was the duty of the police officer to keep the individual engaged in unusual behavior under observation, but that the officer was not entitled to detain the individual. Applying California law as outlined in the Lathan case, the officer did not have the level of reasonable suspicion necessary to detain Mr. Khalif. While it may have been unusual for individuals to be in the store after closing, there was nothing to suggest that the activity was related to crime, and the events were far more consistent with innocent activity than criminal activity. The only fact the officer points to that made the activity unusual was the time of night. 
which is not enough to warrant reasonable suspicion. Instead of detaining Mr. Khalif, the officer should have observed the activity in the store to determine if there was any suggestion that it was related to crime. No, I'm not gonna, do you have a problem with me? I have a problem with you three being in the store right is now. Is this your store? That's why. what I'm asking you. Uh, this town is my duty to protect. This is, I live here. Do not tell okay. me about whatever. That's fine. Okay. Where do you live? I do not, I, I'm not gonna answer your question. When your supervisor is here, you tell him to come talk to me. Okay, he's already on his way. Can okay. I tell him who so, you are? So I do not have to talk to you. You do have to talk no, to me. No, I do not have to yes, talk to you. Yes, you do. Because it's 1 o'clock in the About morning what? and you're inside of a store and you can't tell me why. It does not matter. I would have done the same thing if you were over there at the candy store or wherever. Dude. Can you tell me who you getting, are? I, I'm not going to tell you who I am. Why? Because I'm not going to. Why? Because I'm not going to. Who are you? you My name is Isaac. Isaac, and then yes. what's your problem? My problem is there's three people in a store at one o'clock in the morning. Because, because there's two, three people in the store. What's the problem with two, three people being in a store? It's one o'clock in the morning, sir. And what's the problem with that? People aren't usually in stores at one in the morning. And what's the problem with that? Because you can't tell me why you're... So your supervisor is going to come tell me what, what the problem is. Let me put it this way, sir. Yes. If I was walking around that store at one o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. not in this, would you think it's odd? Hmm? Would you think that was odd? If you are doing what? If I was in a store at one o'clock. I'll be in the minding morning, my business. Huh? I'll be minding my business. I would think that's a little strange. I'll be minding my business. I'm not going to tell you anything. You're going to bring your supervisor? You bring your supervisor. He's coming right now. He's right here. Okay. He, you tell him to come talk to me. He's on his way. Okay. Where's your supervisor? He's right there. Okay. Tell him to come then. Okay. Yeah. Supervisor, how are you doing? That's right. How are you? You doing? came three of you guys. What's, go what's going on? What's the problem? There's three black people in the store. What's the problem it's, with that? So it's one o'clock in the morning. There's three people in the store. There's three black people in the store. Three o'clock in the morning. No, what's the problem? There's three people. There's in three the black store. people in the store. It's three o'clock in the morning. What's the problem? It's one o'clock in the morning, and yes. you never have any activity at the store at that time. Okay. Is this your store? So what's the problem with having three black people in the store? It, you keep emphasizing black people. That's not. Yes. What it's, yeah. You cannot tell me you don't see that. You see that. Three black people in a store. What's the problem with that? I see three people in the I store see black at people one o'clock in, in the morning. I see one o'clock in the morning. This okay. street's closed up at nine o'clock at night. There's okay. nobody here. Okay. So what's the problem? That's the problem. Okay. This street closes at nine o'clock at night, and okay. there's never anybody in here. Okay. This isn't regular business hours. There's okay. no customers in there. Okay. Is it your store? That's all we want to know. Who, who, like, do you want to know why? I want to know what you're doing in the store at one o'clock in the morning. Okay. If I tell you it's my store, then what? Then show me that it's your store. I do not have to show you nothing. If I tell you it's my store, then what? The Tiburon officer was joined by his supervisor, Sergeant Michael Blasi, who demands that Mr. Khalif prove he owns the store. In general, citizens are not legally required to assist police officers with their investigations. In this situation, Mr. Khalif did not have a responsibility to answer Sergeant Blasi's questions, explain what he was doing in the store, or prove that he is the owner of the store. He claimed to be the store owner and the officers had no evidence that he was being untruthful. There were no signs of forced entry, such as broken windows or doors, the lights were on in the store, the individuals inside were not trying to hide, and nothing was ransacked or destroyed. The store alarm did not go off, and no one called the police to report criminal activity. There is far more evidence to suggest nothing illegal is happening than the conclusion that criminal activity is occurring. The officers easily could have accepted Mr. Khalif's statement that he owned the store and stayed outside to observe the activity occurring in the store. I do not have to prove anything to you. Is this if I tell you if it's my store, then what? Aren't you glad we're looking out for your store? I am glad you're looking out for my store, but okay. if I tell you it's my store, then what? Then you should be grateful that we're being as, as diligent as we are to look out for the street. That's all we do. Okay, it's my store. Okay. Okay. Did you identify yourself? I do not have to identify myself to anybody. It's my store. So, okay, then what? Sergeant Blasi argues that the officers are justified in their demands because the stores in the area are closed at night, and the sergeant's experience as an officer would likely play a role in the court's ruling. Starting with the infamous Terry case, courts have given considerable deference to a police officer's experience when determining the reasonableness of a stop. In the Terry case, the Supreme Court determined that officers have reasonable suspicion when they observe unusual conduct which leads them to reasonably conclude that criminal activity may be occurring, and that when determining whether an officer acted reasonably courts must give due weight to the specific reasonable inferences that officers are entitled to draw from the facts in light of their experience. Through the years, the level of reverence
reverence courts have given to officer experience has grown, and there are many court decisions that deal with this issue. For example, in the 1981 case of United States versus Cortez, the Supreme Court stated that trained law enforcement officers can combine objective facts that are meaningless to the untrained with permissible deductions from those facts to form a legitimate basis for suspecting a particular individual of a crime. Then, in the 1996 case of Ornelas versus United States, the Supreme Court determined that a reviewing appellate court should give due weight to inferences drawn from facts both by local judges and by local police, who view the facts through the lens of their experience and expertise. Some legal scholars have interpreted this case to grant decisions and conclusions made by police officers the same level of deference as is given to judges in appellate courts. Most recently, in the 2020 case of Kansas versus Glover, the Supreme Court held that officers are not required to point to specific training materials or field experiences justifying their reasonable suspicions, and that they can rely on knowledge gained outside of their law enforcement training and experience in determining probable cause. However, even the high level of deference courts give to officer experience is not a rubber stamp for all police decisions, and it is unlikely that any court would find that Sergeant Blasi had a reasonable suspicion that Mr. Khalif was engaged in criminal activity. Yeah, exactly. So it's my, it's my store, so, so what? Can you prove that it's your I story? do not have to prove anything to Actually, you, sir. you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. To who and to why? Oh, my God. I do not have yes, to prove my existence have to, prove to you. who you are. I do not have to, have to prove my existence to you. You are in a you. store yes. after hours when yes. the stores are closed okay. on the street all night. Okay. This store, that last store, this last store that closes is Sam's Anchor Cafe right over there. Okay. And it closes at 10 o'clock at night. Okay. There's three people in the store in the middle okay. of the... Excuse me, I'll put this on now. Okay. okay. There's three people in the store in the middle of the night. Okay. We are doing what we're supposed to do. We're looking out for our community. Okay. That's all we're doing. Okay. That's it. You're looking out for my community. That's yes. what you mean to say. If you're, if this is your store, you're part no, of No, 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 if this is my store, I've already told you it's my store. Don't use the word if. Okay. I've told you it's my store. Okay. Then okay. we're looking out so for your the community. Okay. Do All you right. want us to look out for your community, I do or do you want, you want to us to let anybody just walk in here at 2 o'clock in the morning and steal all your I stuff? Wa I want you to look out for my community. You sure? Because yeah, sure. you don't sound like you're very grateful. No, no, you no, no, sound no. like you're very defensive. No, no, no. I'm, I do not sound this defensive. Really? Hey, hey. Come on now. Calm, calm you're down. You're being very defensive. No, 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 no. Calm down. My officer is calm doing down. his job. Your officer is not doing his job. Yes, your he is. Yeah, he, listen. Yes, he is. Listen. He is doing his job. Man, that's exactly what I did. I knocked and asked if you guys were owner yeah, to restock the anger. Off, what is, what I didn't know you had an alarm system, sir. I just got here. Sir, we're, we're supposed to look by. out for this neighborhood. There's that's a sign here that says Red Room Security. Those so are a dime a dozen, and half of those aren't even exi Half of those don't have active alarms with them. Okay. All right. So I, I want to wrap up this conversation. We're wasting time. So what's going on? What, what's up? What's the next step? Prove Can to us just, that you have keys. How is my store? Okay, okay, the okay wait, wait, wait. That's a perfect okay. thing. I just asked for I don't that. Know. Okay, okay. Look, you know look, what? Put wait. the key in the door and we're out of here. Yeah. Put the key in the door? Put the key in the door. I if asked you, if this is your store, you have the key in the door. That is what I'm telling you. There you go. Stand back, please. There you do go. not raise your voice at me. Okay? Put the key in the door don't and we're out of here. Don't raise your voice at me. Just chill. I'm going to put my key in the door. That's his store. What's that? That's his store. Thank you sir. That's all I need to know. Thank you. See ya. After repeatedly insisting that Mr. Khalif needed to prove that he owned the store, Sergeant Blasi immediately accepts a stranger's statement that Mr. Khalif owns the store and walks away. The stranger provided no further evidence than what the officers already had, as Mr. Khalif had informed them that he owned the store multiple times. The officers did not ask the stranger any additional questions or take any actions to determine his credibility, and simply walked away from the encounter based on his word. Huh? Can you put the key in the door, please? I'm not going to put the key in the door. He already you told you. Please Chief of police is walking that's away. That's your supervisor. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're he said walk, walk away. away. We're good. The same day as the incident, Mr. Khalif posted a video his friend recorded of the interaction on Yema's Instagram page, alleging that the encounter was an instance of racial profiling. The video went viral, sparking a protest in support of Mr. Khalif and the Black Lives Matter movement. The protest, which occurred on August 29, 2020, was attended by over 200 people who marched to the Tiburon Police Department, where Mr. Khalif spoke about his experience. In response to the outrage, Sergeant Blasi resigned on September 1st, and Tiburon Police Chief Michael Cronin resigned on September 13th. It is unclear whether Mr. Khalif is taking further legal action. Overall, the Tiburon officers get a C- for misrepresenting the concept of reasonable suspicion, detaining Mr. Khalif without any evidence of criminal activity, and for accepting the opinion of a random citizen while simultaneously ignoring the very same claims from Mr. Khalif. 
Although it could certainly be argued that the Tiburon officers had good intentions, their investigative tactics were far from reasonable, and the officers took the most invasive route possible when merely observing the scene to determine the criminality of the situation would have likely rendered more favorable results for everyone involved. The officers simply did not take the time to gather more evidence before confronting and accusing Mr. Khalif of criminal activity, and were operating under the impression that Mr. Khalif was required to answer their questions. While the city of Tiburon's arrest data does not explicitly indicate a pattern of racist and Enforcement, there is an argument to be made that implicit bias played a role in this interaction, but the sample size of the arrest data is too small to draw any accurate conclusions. Out of the Tiburon Police Department's 51 stops made between January 1st and December 31st of 2020, only two were African Americans, making up only 3.9% of the total. All that said, when compared with the city of Tiburon's census data for 2020, the department's arrest data does indicate a slight imbalance for minority enforcement. But, as mentioned before, the sample size for the arrest data is too low for accurate results, and there are a plethora of other variables that could influence this discrepancy, such as tourists being stopped by police. Ultimately, the officers did not arrest Mr. Khalif or place him into handcuffs, but that does not absolve them from failing to conduct a legitimate investigation and accusing Mr. Khalif of criminal activity with no evidence. Mr. Khalif gets an A-, minus because although he could have invoked his right to remain silent more effectively, he did not allow the officers to intimidate him or force him to comply with their unreasonable demands, and he made a legitimate effort to dispel their suspicions without compromising his Fourth Amendment rights. At no point did Mr. Khalif break the law, and at no point was he reasonably suspected of breaking the law. It is clear that the California courts would have favored Mr. Khalif in this situation given their rulings in the past. And this interaction is a testament to the notion that the Tiburon officers could use more training on the state's case law. Mr. Khalif's reluctance to assist the officers in their investigation could be seen as inflammatory, but he was under no legal obligation to aid the officers with their investigation. After all, being accused of robbing your own store would likely dissolve the trust of almost anyone. As mentioned before, the officers could have gathered just as much information by standing outside of the store without potentially offending Mr. Khalif or baselessly accusing him of a crime and it's difficult to fault Mr. Khalif for having a reactionary response to their accusations. I commend Mr. Khalif for having the conviction to challenge the logic of the officers and the courage to defend his civil liberties. Be sure to give your support to the Marin Independent Journal for covering this story. You can find a link to their channel in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the ATA Patreon page for more police interaction content.